Martin Luther King Jr. is one of the most celebrated American leaders to date. The impact he made on the American people as well as the world as a whole is felt even today, despite his assassination in 1968. We all know his famous speech, I Have a Dream. Some of us have memorized the most powerful lines of the speech, and most of us even wish we had been present at the steps of the Lincoln Memorial just to see him in action and feel the effect he left. Still, would you believe it if I told you there are a few facts about him that you would be amazed to hear? Well, saddle up, as I take you through 15 interesting facts not known about this American legend. Welcome to Untold History Guy, where you can find fun, fascinating, and sometimes shocking chronicles of history. Join us as we journey back and uncover the untold truths of the past. His birth name was Michael. You heard me right. The civil rights defender was born on January 15, 1929 and was named after his father, Michael King. In 1934, his father, who was a pastor at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, attended an international Baptist conference in Germany. During his visit, the preaching by the 16th century Protestant Reformation leader Martin Luther moved him so greatly that when King's father returned home, he officially changed his name and that of his five-year-old son. You shall be named Martin Luther King Jr. He allegedly attempted suicide twice before the age of 13. Historians also imply that Martin Luther King Jr. battled suicidal thoughts while growing up and even depression later on in life. Unfortunately, at age 12 in May 1941, his grandmother Jenny passed away from a heart attack. King had snuck out that day and was out watching a parade, even though his parents had insisted that he stay home and watch after his grandmother. When he eventually learned of the news, he was so devastated and guilty that he jumped from a second-story window. Reportedly, this was the second time he had tried to commit suicide. King's family paid for Julia Roberts' birth. What a small world we live in. In another life, I'd want to pay for Rihanna's birth. In the 1960s, Walter and Betty Roberts owned the only integrated children's theater group in Atlanta called the Actors and Writers Workshop. In an interview, Julia Roberts revealed that Martin Luther King Jr.'s wife, Coretta Scott King, called Roberts' mother and asked if the kids could be part of the school, as they were having a hard time getting any to accept them. So Betty Roberts accepted having the children at her acting class, and after that, the families became close. In 1967, when Julia Roberts was born, the Roberts family couldn't afford the hospital bills, so the King family helped them out. Martin Luther was a lifelong smoker. Though not many knew or even saw him in the act, Martin Luther King Jr. was an avid smoker. It's said that he hid while indulging due to the stigma he would receive from the church and the public, and also because he never wanted his children to take up after him. Do as I say, not as I do, kids. On the day of his shooting, King was allegedly smoking on the balcony of his hotel room. Reverend Kyles, who was present then, reported that before the ambulance came, he had to take out the pack of cigarettes in his pocket to avoid his name being tarnished. I mean, what are friends for? King wasn't always a public speaker. Martin Luther King Jr.'s speeches and powerful statements are still remembered to this day. His audience always listened to his speeches keenly, and he would be applauded for his powerful arguments against racism. So, it would make sense to assume that such a person would be considered to have the gift of public speaking from a tender age. But would you believe it if I told you that in his early years, even I could give him a run for his money? While training to become a minister in seminary school, King got a C grade more than once for public speaking. Really, King? His major heartbreak was by a white girl. Betty Moitz was a white girl studying arts in 1949 when she met a 20-year-old King, who was studying to become a pastor. He must have been quite the Prince Charming, for she became his girlfriend very quickly, despite living in a segregated society. Theirs was a rom-com story, as Betty's mother was the college nutritionist, so the couple met often in her kitchen on campus, not for bread and cake, but to get to know each other better. Still, King's friends constantly warned him of the repercussions, and every time they were together, people around them would throw stares. In the end, one of his close friends informed him that if he ever wanted to return home to the South, he wouldn't be accepted in their all-black Baptist church if he were to marry a white woman. The decision to let her go crushed him, but he eventually did it. It said he never recovered. King and Coretta had an unusual honeymoon. On June 18, 1953, King married Coretta Scott in Alabama. 
The Kings were married by Martin Luther King Sr. in Coretta's parents' home on their front lawn in Marion. After their wedding ceremony, friends and family wished them well as they drove off to enjoy their honeymoon. Unfortunately, all hotels in their area were whites only, so they were rejected for being black. They decided not to let the frustration and rejection get to them, so instead, they drove to a black-owned funeral home. Oh, Coretta, you should have dumped the guy. The owner, who was the undertaker there, was their friend, so he allowed them to use one of their empty rooms. What a wedding night. King didn't always want to be a minister. The King's lineage was made up of Baptist ministers since both King Sr. and his father had taken up the role. In his writings, King revealed that he always thought he would do better as a doctor or a lawyer. However, in college, when he joined a Bible course by Dr. George D. Kelsey, he decided that he could use ministry to further his activism on radical reform and social justice. King's volunteer walked away with a piece of history. In 1963, King's speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial is remembered as one of the best speeches ever made. 26-year-old George Raveling had been a volunteer to King and his team during the event. After the event was over, Raveling asked King for his three-page speech, and the orator gave it to him without a second thought. The volunteer kept this speech stored away for the next 20 years until he finally understood its historical significance and pulled the speech out from the book he had kept it in. It's known that Raveling turned down offers of up to $3.5 million, insisting that the document would remain in his family. What? He noted, however, that the part he loved about the speech where Luther claimed he dreamt of a united nation was not on the document, meaning it had been improvised. He could have just memorized the thing and then sold it though, right? But what do I know? The civil rights defender allegedly had extramarital affairs. King was a human being who had faults like everyone else. Many don't know that King had many lady friends across the United States whom he allegedly had intimate relations with. While King was alive, the FBI had him under surveillance, keeping tabs to determine whether he had ties with the Communist Party. These secret recordings of King's hotel rooms during his various visits allegedly revealed that even on the night before his assassination, he spent the night with an unknown lady. It's said that when King was shot the next day and rushed to hospital, the motel staff advised that lady not to go with him in order to not tarnish his reputation. Throughout his life, it's believed that the FBI tried hard to discredit him to the point of sending these recordings to King's home while he was away, knowing that his wife always received his mail when he wasn't home. But Coretta knew about his extramarital affairs and even talked about them often, claiming that those were issues too minor to affect their high-level relationship. What a wife! The FBI wanted King to kill himself. Researchers revealed that the FBI, led by their director Sam Pollard, sent an anonymous letter to the civil rights defender in 1964. The writer gave the impression of being a black man, but later on, investigations were done and it was confirmed that the letter came from the FBI. This letter talked of King's extramarital affairs, compared him to King Henry VIII, and stated that he was not fit to live. In the letter, King was given 34 days and was suggested to kill himself. Thank God for democracy and human rights activism in the 21st century. His arrest contributed to JFK's win. King had been arrested many times throughout his life, but the most memorable of his arrests was when he inadvertently contributed to John F. Kennedy's election. King was arrested in October 1960 for being a part of a sit-in protest at a department store in Georgia. This happened while Senator JFK was vying for the presidency against Richard Nixon. When he heard that the minister was being unjustly arrested, he was advised that his move could determine the voter turnout. This led to Kennedy calling on Coretta Scott King and showing her his support. In return, he had a huge black voter turnout that led to his win. Talk about grabbing an opportunity. There was another casualty upon his death. On April 4, 1968, at the Lorraine Motel where King was assassinated, a hotel worker died immediately after. Lorraine Bailey, who was the motel owner's wife, died from a fatal stress-induced heart attack after the shocking events of King's death. Interestingly, her death was one of the reasons why the ambulance took a while to arrive at the scene. She had been the switchboard operator at the motel, so when anyone tried calling the ambulance using the phone at the motel room, nobody was on the switchboard to assist in routing the call. Talk about a bad day at the office. His autopsy revealed the heart of a 60-year-old. Another little-known fact about him is that the stress, late nights, and frustrations in his fight for civil rights 
took a toll on his health. Martin Luther King Jr.'s autopsy revealed that even though he was only 39 at the time of his death, he had the heart of a 30-year-old man. Yikes. King's mother was also assassinated. Six years after King's assassination, Alberta King suffered the same fate as her son while at the Ebenezer Baptist Church. It was on the 30th of June 1974, while she was playing the organ, that a man in the front row pew got up and started spraying bullets. The shooter, Marcus Wayne Chenault Jr., later confessed that he had gotten a divine instruction. What is with these murderers and their divine instructions? To kill King's father, but since his mother had been nearer, he shot her instead. Alberta had been 69 years old at the time of her death. Chenault Jr. got the death sentence, but later it was changed to life imprisonment since the King family opposed the death penalty. What a legend Martin Luther King Jr. was. What do you think of these interesting facts about him? Comment below and tell us what you think. Also, if you know of any other surprising facts, share them, and let's all learn more about this powerful man. Feel free to go through our other interesting videos as well.